Today, people are really struggling on shading cameras that does not otherwise have a, a direct way of being shaded. I'm talking about uh, like GoPro cameras or small POV cameras that um, will be hooked into broadcast infrastructures nowadays and uh, doesn't represent something from an ordinary camera chain. Now, there is a category of products that will help you and that's called frame synchronizers. And AJA has made one, it's called FS4 and it's a 4K or HD or SD frame synchronizer. So it will do take all these signals in. They can do up, down, cross conversion and stuff like that. But most importantly is the fact that they have ways to color correct the incoming SDI signals. And uh, in this video, I'll show how the FS4 frame synchronizer can work with the Skyway RCPs, which are classic but universal RCPs with a joystick for iris, iris because we are not actually controlling the lens in this case, but we will be controlling uh, some type of gain in the FS4. And the Skyhoy RCP uh, is a great product. First of all, it is absolutely universal. It means that it, it um, does not uh, work best with a particular camera. It works with uh, Sony cameras, Panasonic cameras, JVC, Ari and Mira cameras. It works with the whole bunch of robotic cameras, PTC cameras that uh, that you know that Skyhoy supports. And now it also works with the FS4 frame synchronizer. So I'm very excited to show you how this works today. Um, the FS4 controlled by the Skyhoy RCP. Today my configuration is the FrameSync, the RCP V2 from Skyhoy, a monitor to view the output of the FrameSync, and then a camera to feed an input source into the FrameSync that we can work with. And then on my laptop I have the web interface of the frame synchronizer, so it allows us to see how parameters changed on the RCP will actually be reflected in uh, the, the unit right here. Now, um, the first thing we want to do is to take a close up of the RCP. We have a uh, the, the preview button is not different from any other configuration we have made. We have an active panel button right here. I can use that to turn on and off. You can see now the iris or oh, the the iris is not active. When I turn it on again, you can see that the iris is active and you can also see a change on the signal. So this is of course one of the most significant things, the iconic iris joystick. And how does that actually work? You can see in the web interface that it's changing the prog amp gain. And if I'm turning the uh, ring, I'm, I'm changing the prog amp black. And that's basically mimicking master black and gain on a, a camera. So um, the prog amp enabled uh, button. If I disable that, you'll see in the web interface it corresponds to uh, enabling disabling that that function. Um, likewise, we have a color corrector enable button right here. If I press that one, you see I I get access to a whole lot of uh, more features in the color corrector. Now um, let's move on to that. So if we look at the top of the RCP, you'll see we have up here we have encoders and they are linked to information up here. So now we talked about the color correct. You can see that changing the red gain, blue gain, or oh sorry, green gain and the blue gain on these encoders correspond completely to what you would expect when you look in the web interface. Now, if I, if I change, this is the, the black uh, levels for red, green, and blue. Uh, you see what uh, they should be changing too. So, um, did we see that? Yeah, it's, yeah, I just didn't see it with my eyes. So now, what I did just there was a classic Skyhoy controller thing. I pressed the encoder means that I have much quicker movement of the parameters uh, with the uh, the knob. Now, um, if we go to this section of buttons right here, this whole group, this group, they are the menu buttons on the RCP. So when I press this one up and down, I'm toggling between a few options on these encoders. So you see now I'm pressing up, I'm pressing down, you see the changes gain and gamma. So here I have access to the gamma features. Over here we have our enabling button. So if I'm uh, toggling this, you see I can turn the color corrector on and off and that's totally corresponding with pressing the button you saw just before further down on the panel. Now let's go to something else. So if we look at this section, we have a button here that gives us access to the prog amp, which is essentially, let's do that. Um, 
so that's giving us access to the gain and master black. And uh, if I press the lower edge, we have access to the legalizer. So generally these buttons are, are set up as a clever menu where a single button serves two purposes. Like in the, in the case of this button, color one and two, when I press the upper edge, I get the first set of parameters. The lower edge get, gives me another set of parameters and likewise over here for, for this one. So access to program and legalizer, access to scaling and region of interest, input, status, and audio. So that was an introduction to the menu section right there. And uh, we'll now see how that plays out on the um, encoders up here in the top. Now I go to the program and um, we should uh, now look at the upper parameters in the web interface. So if I'm changing the gain value, you can see how this is obviously changing, but that is in fact the same as the iris handle. So there's a little redundancy there, something you can easily remove because it's all configurable, but um, it's just to demonstrate that we can put it on encoders and we can have it on the iris joystick if we want. Likewise with the master black, that's also tied to the ring on the joystick. Then we have the hue parameter and we have the saturation parameter right there. And again, we can turn it on and off. Again, this function, uh, you might wanna, yeah, it's just one click on and off. So it's the same as the button that you, f you saw further down on the RCP. If we look at the legalizer options, then we also need to change, um, oh, where is it? Let me see, is it an input? Um, I sort of forgot that I think, or maybe it's, ah, right there, video legalizer. So let's just turn the color corrector off. Um, when I turn the color corrector off, um, wait, what does it say? Anyway, I'll do it on the RCP then. Okay, so video legalizer, and now I'm turning it on using this encoder. In fact, it's not just on, it's, it's actually a YUV or it's RGB or it's off. So I have those four different options and you can see, again, this is completely and nicely reflected in the the web interface as well. Now, um, let's go to YUV. So there you see again, I have access to parameters for the legalizer on these knobs right there. If I go to scale, we now need to change to a different menu. So we go over here and then we see that we have um, the region of interest scalar. So if I press the lower edge of the menu button, I have region of interest right here. And it's currently set to full. So let's first look at this one. Off, full, square, setup, and off again. So uh, let's go to full. So when I'm in full, I can now make region of interest scaling, or, or not scaling, but well, basically, um, changing on the left and the right uh, side of the picture. So I'm adjusting these parameters using these knobs and you can see the effect on the, on the picture as well on, um, on the output from the uh, frame synchronizer. Um, so that was the region of interesting. If I go to the scale, uh, we see that we need to, to turn it on just like usually. And again, in the web interface this is completely reflected. So as I'm now changing these values, uh, aspect ratio, uh, custom uh, horizontal and uh, vertical position. Um, this is reflected in the web interface. Now, in fact, for the scalar, we have also mapped it down onto this joystick. So um, yeah, what is this? This is actually a joystick. It's uh, left, right, up and down, and it is touch uh, or pressure sensitive. So even though it's not like a stick you can actually move, it, we call it a joypad. So it's, it's, it's possible to use this to, to do certain things. And um, the movements are slow, but you can actually see that the picture is moving around um, slightly. Maybe we need to, to increase the speed of this operation because as I just showed it, it seems more efficient to simply use the encoders. Uh, so we need to increase the speed parameter on this one. But in fact, it's actually a pretty nice thing to have a, a joypad on your RCP, something that you won't see on a whole lot of RCPs actually. So that will give you access to uh, such great features as um, moving a region of interest around or maybe even controlling a robotic camera. Now let's uh, move down to uh, the input section right here. So um, then I also need to change to the input and here you can see the encoder will allow us to select what is the input actually on frame synchronizer one. So we need to go 
so you can see frame synchronizer one. Um, oh sorry, see the, the, the displays up here. Um, what shall happen in, in, in case of, uh, of a signal loss and all these things. Okay, I think you, you kind of get the idea that we have access to all these things. So again, you can see the correspondence between this and the web interface of the unit. Now, if I go to um, status, as we just did, I have access to a whole lot of different things like uh, test generator, uh, test pattern, freeze, fan speed. Fan speed is, a, is, a, is an interesting thing. I don't know if you can hear it. Maybe I need to bow down. So now you can hear the fan if I shut up. And I'm adjusting down the audio now. And then up again. So <laughs> that's the, f the fan speed can actually be controlled from the RCP. I, I don't know why you would ever <laughs> do that. It should probably be automatic because who wants noise? But um, okay, you can do it. You can do it in the web interface. You can do it on the RCP. Now, um, there's, there's one thing that's really important to uh, also highlight here in, in the end of the video, and that is the fact that we have four channel, uh, channels uh, on the frame synchronizer, and we want to be able to change between them. So this is also easily done. Um, it's done by this button. And uh, if I go to any menu except... So what you didn't see is that uh, this is this is the knob where you can change the uh, the uh, the camera. Now, um, so generally, when I'm here, you can see that we have camera one selected, and if I'm turning this, nothing is happening. But if I hold down the shift key, I get access to changing the channel right there. So we have decided that changing the channel is something that requires holding down the shift key to actually do that. It also gives access, and you'll see that on the top of the RCP, you have access on these buttons, you have access to, uh, to presets. So as I hold down the shift key, you can see that we have a preset. The white button over there is the default preset. And if I press the, um, the upper edge on the uh, preview button, you can see that these labels will tell you that the buttons underneath are uh, linked to presets 1 to 8. Okay, so back to this selector. There was a special feature. If you go to the status menu and hold down the shift key, you'll see, oh well, you may, no, you may not need to hold down the shift key in this case, because in the status menu, despite, uh, contrary to all the other ones, in the status menu, you have access to instead mapping the monitor output of the RCP. So, there you see video one, two, three, four on the monitor output can be mapped on that button. Phew, that was a whole lot of things. We, um, we know this is a very unique application, a true RCP form factor controller controlling the frame sync FS4 from ATAA. I think this should be good news for a whole lot of people out there looking to have real RCP control of their otherwise not shadable sources. Let's get